would have pointed it out. <laughs> go back online it would make us it would make another attack so you have to address these things as you, as you come up with so we're going to go around the first the first issue we're going to talk about is the status of what crowdstrike believes 
is going on in our current in the current exchange for water resources and zach is going to lead that conversation sure yes yeah, so unfortunately if you want to talk you kind of have to come up just a little bit to that corner there um yes. in order to make sure that the see what's going on unless you're at the table okay. yeah that's good yeah. okay um so right now the the server remains in network containment uh, CrowdStrike uh, advises us to leave it there, and uh, you know we've chosen to to do that. Uh, they have completed their investigation. Uh, just before the detection, uh, they see logs where a network request was made uh, between the server and somewhere in Russia. Uh, CrowdStrike was able to identify the malware that was being used for the exploit. And CrowdStrike has not observed any additional malicious activity in Waters Network after the server was put in containment. Okay, then anybody have any questions for Zach concerning where we currently are? So is that, did they did they actually get into the network then? Did they got into that server. Into that server. There's no. But no, not into the. We'll talk about the okay. status of the other servers. Okay. But we don't believe. And that's for the email. That's the, that's the exchange server. Exchange server. Right. Yeah. I, I had a question for Zach. Hey, Zach. I, um, so since last Thursday, I've, I've heard from several county employees um, who've talked to people, water resources, and apparently water resources um, employees were told or are under the belief that this is all made up. This isn't a real thing. This is something that's been concocted by ADP and the people running ADP. I've heard that from a number of different people um, in the county. Is that possible or is this real ransomware? I mean, can you explain? And this is a third party vendor telling us this. This isn't you guys diagnosing this, right? Correct. So uh, explain, I, I guess, a little to maybe put some of those rumors to bed. Um, you know, what type of independent verification we have of this so I don't have to listen to any more of this nonsense. Sure, uh, CrowdStrike is a, a national company. Uh, they are a third party vendor. Um, it is not us that brought the detections in. Uh, we were aware of them when CrowdStrike alerted us. Um, this is not something that we would have been able to duplicate on our end. Um, you know, it's not the same as, as uh, pen testing or what we call penetration testing. Um, you know, this was, uh, they were able to identify um, the exact type of malware that was used um, and, uh, you know, what it was attempting to exploit. Um, there's, there's not a way that we would have been able to duplicate that um, with a connection going to Russia from our end. Uh, I don't see how we could duplicate this type of attack. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, the next item was as we dug into um, further into the system, we had some issues with the DNS of, of water resources. And Alan, if you could speak to kind of tell people what DNS is and then what you were able to discover with the issues surrounding that. Well, well DNS is a domain name service. So when you type in, say, google.com, really what that does is it looks for what is Google. Uh, IP address. So Google's IP address for the is 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. So it, it finds it. So that way, as humans, we don't have to remember numbers. We remember names because that's what we're good at. So what we had to do was, in order to get ready for the M365 to get their email set up, is we had to uh, set up their their DNS. What we found was is their DNS was being controlled by a third party company. So we had to go and, and, and take over basically, get that transferred into uh, the network solution account, which is is the water resource account. Your, your The gcdwr.org account is the network solutions. So uh, we have access to that account. So we went into that account, worked with network solutions to have the DNS servers brought back into that account and work with them to make sure that uh, that service would be available immediately so when our, our guys started working and, and changing of those numbers that it was available so they could do that immediately and not have to wait hours or days to get it done. I this way they can continue to move on with the uh, the email migration. What I had asked Mike Kurzinger for the access to that Vario account. Vario.com is where, where they were set up. And he had said that Alan had the credentials. We didn't have the credentials. I, I don't have the credentials. I didn't have them either. He thought maybe 
Joe Camino did, but then he couldn't find them, so we're not sure. So we just had to, to add around that. Yeah, so we just went around it and just brought them into under the, the, the single account. It makes it easier any, as well. Any questions on the DNS component? Okay. So the domain, who controls the domain right now? We do. Right now. Okay. We do. The, which is which is which is what? What's the domain? What's their domain? Is that that org? Right. Okay. Yeah. The GCDW. Are we going to set up their email addresses like everybody else is in the county? Yeah. Yes. Correct. Yeah. That will alias the old ones. People that are people could still use. Just like mine. If they still do my old dot com. Old address. It'll route over. Okay. But if guys send out anything, it's under the new one. That's right. Okay. It's called an alias. And that'll be the next discussion here. So there's two discussions that Corey is going to deal with. I'll do with what's called a tenant. And that has to do with how you set up an Office 365 email. And then he's going to go into the status of that um, M365 migration. So basically what a tenant is in terms of Office 365 is kind of like an overarching umbrella. And underneath it, we have our domains. So for Jim, you have gcpao.com. Water Resources has gcdwr.org. We have gcauditor.com. That is the tenant. So our main goal, once we established there was no further threat and we needed to get their email back online, was to bring gcdwr into our tenant. And when we started doing that, that's when we discovered to Alan's point earlier that the DNS records were not in really control of us and we had to go out, find them, move them over to Network Solutions, and that took about and a half and then we were able to propagate them once we propagated them we found out that water resources already had a tenant that had gcdwr.org in it and we could not add it to our tenant so then after some internal discussion we decided to do what is known in 365 as an internal admin takeover where we <laughs> are going to create an internal admin account and then we can remove that domain from the other tenant and then put it in ours so we did that and that took us until about 6 p.m. on Sunday to fix. So once we had that up and running, we were able to hand off to Expert IT. They were able to get started on setting up accounts. And currently we are in progress of setting up water resources accounts underneath the GIS domain so we can spin them up with emails, hopefully by the end of the day. But that's where we stand with that. So would it have made your, would it, would it have made spinning up the new Office 365 email quicker or easier if you had the credentials of whoever created that. Correct. It would have made it a lot easier because we wouldn't have had to do this internal admin takeover, which took about three to four hours for us to do to be able to get into it, verify our access, verify that we actually own the domain, which we had to do with the DNS records that haven't provided to us. And it was just a whole afternoon of work. It could have been avoided had water resources had the credentials for it. So have we determined who has those credentials or who created the tenant? So I had reached out and asked Mike Kurzinger uh, for the credentials, and he indicated that he did not have credentials for it. He said he was unaware of any um, a tenant being set up by water resources in the past. Um, when we got into the tenant, we found that the only user established in there was Mike Kurzinger. Now, that doesn't mean that he not really did it. I mean, somebody else theoretically could have set up a GCDWR tenant for Microsoft 365 migration. Um, we don't know. There's really no logging on that, but nobody had accessed it within the last 30 days. But we have control of that tenant now. So it's kind of like getting your domain name. Is that what that is? Like, you know how you have to sometimes, like for my business, I had to fight that. No, I see what you're saying. No, not quite. It, no, I don't know how. It's, it's the first step you go to to start setting up um, 365 email. Okay. It's the first thing you have to do. You create a tenant and then you start building off of that tenant. So our hope and desire was to use um, water resources existing name and name the tenant that particular. You, you okay. use that to identify yourself. And when we tried to do that, we found somebody else already grabbed it. Okay. And that's what appears and to you be. you can't use that. It, it wasn't, it didn't so develop did. email, but they they attached the tenant okay. that name. It ended up creating about a four to five hour delay in the Microsoft 365 migration. Okay. So this thing that you passed around is what? So that is a screenshot once we got into the tenant of the only user established there. Um, so I, I don't know, it's possible that when 
he was looking at the Microsoft uh, 365 migration a couple of years ago. He created a test kind of environment and then forgot about it. That's what we initially did with ours, and we didn't forget about it, but we created one and populated it from there. Um, it's possible, but in any case, it, it cost about four or five hours yesterday afternoon delay, um, which was actually kind of cool because we got to learn the process of how to do an admin takeover of a tenant, and we worked with Microsoft or with uh, Expert IT on that, Corey and Rob, um, and then we figured it out. So it was an interesting experience. You don't need to find out when this was set up. That's what we're trying to do. And does anybody have a take on the laws with that? It doesn't look like there was much in terms of the logging within the tenant. There wasn't much in terms of the logging. The only thing we could determine is that nobody had accessed the tenant in the past 30 days. And as we've said, and as the screenshot shows, that Kurzinger is the only other one with an account that was inside that tenant. Um, any other questions about that part of it? So, um, Corey, could you now go into wh where are we with the M365 email setup and the status and the database? So, um, in, that, uh, real quick, did you get the Jared email while we're in here? Did he just send one? Yeah. I didn't know. I mean, in the last five minutes, probably, because I emailed him at like 1255. Mailboxes should be in 365 within an hour. There we go. Okay. So, what that means then is Currently this morning, he was in process of setting up the accounts inside of our GIS domain. That means that he has now finished that step and he has assigned licenses to all of those. They've synced over to our 365 tenant and barring any issues, we should be able to start assigning licenses and propagating mailboxes here sometime this afternoon after the meeting. And then they'll be able to email each other and get back to normal operating hours. Hopefully. On that point, you know, Frank, and I appreciate the updates you sent out all weekend and this morning. <clears throat> but I, I guess for everybody's benefit, go over again. One of the other complicating factors was water resources wouldn't give us an email list. Well, so what? And we had to create one from payroll. So it's a, it's a little. Yeah. So obviously, the, the the 2016 Exchange server that was hit is in a network quarantine is in, it's inaccessible at the moment. We were hoping that Mike Kersinger had a backup database. Of some sort. We believe that's the case. There's a, a, a backup database somewhere. Um, there is one somewhere. We don't know if it was properly configured when it was backed up. Um, information we received said it might have been just basically stuck in a loop and just bloating the mailbox and it might not be usable. However, even if we had that, we could have made a better list than what we have. As such with that, the mailboxes we're creating right now are bare bones. They're going to have their user accounts and the mailboxes for those users. That is it. If they had 365 groups, mail enabled security, distribution lists, ways of emailing groups of people or sending an alarm notification at McFarland via an email, those are not set up because we weren't able to obtain that information. So what we did is I was uh, called it. I guess it was early Saturday morning early Saturday that we couldn't get access to the database. So uh, I was, was requested that we have somebody from fiscal go in, pull the latest timesheets submitted by water so that we could reverse engineer email addresses. So they they, so, they wouldn't or couldn't provide you with it, the email addresses? Yeah, so I don't, we, we, we don't know the situation with the backup database. Ultimately, the last time I had asked Mike Kersinger for that was last night, and he said he thought I was being intentionally harassing, so I stopped asking again. But I asked two times for the backup database. He didn't produce it. So it's either the Corey's point that it's really not functional, or it doesn't exist, or he just didn't want to produce it. Regardless, um, where that would have helped then is even if it was outdated and historic, it still would have had these different user, non-user accounts, these weird mailboxes and stuff like that. Alarms so, other so all you have are the employee names from payroll. They exactly. didn't even give you a list of employees that have email. Well, we, we just assumed everybody who's getting a paycheck is going to have email. So we just ham one in, grab the latest one, send it to Frank. They had to massage it. Okay. I, I, guess my, just, I guess my point is they wouldn't even, I mean, somebody right. asked me, hey, geez, Jim, can you give me a list of the email addresses from your office? I would give it to them so they could create. The I guess my question is, are, are, with their email down, are they able to provide every every one of them to you? Well, usually you, your yeah, backup you isn't on the same one that's down. Your backup would be somewhere else. And we believe Water Resources has a drive that they were backing up 
workstations separate from all separate. This. You could just plug that drive into any laptop and okay and read it. You think, or I mean, we don't know their list. They, I mean, if somebody were to ask me, give me the names of email addresses of everybody in the auditor's office, I could, from memory, write them down. I, there's a there's a pattern. Right. First initial, last name, at, and you give the address. How many do you think we're talking about total here? 20, well, we know there's 20-some. 20. 20 the users aren't 20 a big to, deal. We have 25 users. Uh, our problem is these alarms yeah. and the other destination boxes. Mm. We don't know what they call them. <coughs> so we, we are not able to populate those. As soon as they give us that, we can create those. But when we first come up, they're not going to get those emails. I see. Right? But I see. I'm not an IT guy, but... If I can't, let's say I can't connect to my network, I can still open up my computer at my desk yes. and get in there and pull. I mean, well, what I did is they I went, could have come in and spent an hour and given you the You can hit the search point. button and it will look to see yes. anybody you've ever emailed and it'll have them. You listed. could do a search with, with their domain and it would spit out a list. I mean, they could have went in the office and done that. If you had emailed them before, because it's that's on your own. Yeah, but they would have their own email. I mean, that's correct. again, if I went into my emails and put in, I could spit out a list even if I wasn't connected to the network, right? Yeah. Well, I think our hope was that beyond them having their backups in Veeam, which is a server-based one, that there was some sort of air-gapped hard backup outside of there in case this very situation happened, that there was something, even if it was six months old, like, like what we do, right? So we back up in Great Lakes out in the cloud, right, which isn't on our you know, network anyway. It's, it's very secure. But then we also do tape backups, too, in case that there is some kind of a major issue. So I think we were hoping that there was some hard disk backup and we never got confirmation whether or not that's the case. So Corey, when do we expect email to be lit, to be, to be functional based on the addresses you've, you've got created? Based on the addresses we have created and the status update I just received from Jared, I'm hopeful that we can still aim for our end of day today for them being greenlit for mail. Okay, and, and then they'll have to give us word. these other addresses to create Correct. It's up and we can. And that'll be an ongoing process for however long it takes because I'm sure they'll discover mm -hmm. about five right off the bat and then more will trickle in over the coming and, days. And what about uh, what about history? Have you at all looked at history or are we going to get them spun up first and then? We have not looked at history yet and that's where this backup database would have been very helpful for because it would have contained all of their history and we could have imported it then. However, since we don't have that, we are just <laughs> focused on getting them up running and spun up right now versus okay. their so history two things when you say end of day today our end of day is like eight nine o'clock and i only think this will be done at four thirty today right. Um, right sorry and then <laughs> two when we eventually do get back into the local servers the potential that the beam server has a microsoft exchange backup in there that could potentially have a database that's accessible that we could then suck in the back end of the 365 tenant and high so that's possible i, I guess my my question is if so let's say by by midnight tonight, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So you've got. So let's say I have, you know, S. Olick at jugga.oh.gov. That's that's his email address, right? Mm -hmm. But then if I email Steve O at GCDW, whatever their or you know their dot org thing was, mm -hmm. that'll he'll get that email. Correct. Okay. So even if people are using their old, even if people. And then what about all these ones that have been lost in space for for like a week with the what is he going to will he get an influx of all the emails maybe they, they will get an influx of all influx of all the emails yeah. yes okay because yeah. they're all just being kind of it's going to come it's going to be very slow in starting up mm -hmm. because it's going to have to update the database on each when you attach to it and it's going to take a while so they, but they might get all i mean they probably will get all their emails from the past week Correct. Eventually. Eventually. We're talking about before that, the ones that were already in the GCD. Well, I understand right. this taking the old history and populating that, but but at least they're if somebody emails them tomorrow, they're going to get it, even if it's to their old email address. Yeah, right. as long as the email box is is has been connected to Exchange and caught up. Because yeah. if you first go in, you don't get your most recent emails. It first goes back and establishes their yeah. history. So that's why we did the domain, the tenant takeover. Had we not, we could have just skipped that entirely, but then no GCDWR emails would have come back in then. So they would have just been starting with email brand new from today. But then nobody knows that, that address. So that exactly. Would have been. That's why it was necessary to do the admin takeover. Okay. Well, that's and, great work. Any other questions for Zach on the email migration and where we are? I'm sorry, Corey. <laughs> I just gave you another job. Okay, we're going to move to Mike Adams. Uh, Mike, can you give us the status of the other 
IT servers. Now, just to be clear, there is one OT server that we're aware of in this same facility at 470. We have not, just for the, so that I'm aware, you have not touched that server. It's still running, it's operational. That's Does Elise have a question? Um, the, the sound disconnected. Mm, we're good again. Oh no. Yeah, sound disconnected. Everybody's trying to figure out how to get it back on. Okay. She said, Kate, now the sound is good. Oh, okay. Lost for two minutes. Okay, okay, so the other servers were patched. So, yeah. Just the extreme server has been maintained. It yeah, did it was, not have that current patch report. It wasn't the same version. It didn't expire in February or something yeah. too. We got you sent us some screenshot. That um that was a different that was the router. That, that was the firewall. Or the firewall. Firewall. So let's get back, Mike, real quickly. When did you do uh shutdowns or reboots of all the servers? How many times roughly when? Oh, over the weekend, probably two or three times because I want them scanned a few times because a lot of infections may hide themselves. Uh, they'll run a startup and then if they can't find anything or do anything, they'll hide themselves until the next startup. So the last boots were probably Sunday morning and the beam server I last night, probably around seven o'clock. Okay. Any questions for Mike? Uh, we'll move now to the um, to actually Andy and the uh, firewall and disposition of the replacement firewall. So, so if you could first just tell tell them what is a firewall, where is it located, yeah, and what its so, purpose is. So water resources firewall, um, basically it's their gateway between your internal network and the outside. So it provides a layer of security for everything behind it. Um, typically these aren't devices where you just buy it and set it in there, a <coughs> subscription that adds intelligence so that it can recognize new threats. For instance, if you bought a firewall two years ago, it wouldn't know about new things unless you had been updating it. So this one unfortunately had expired February 17th of this year, and it was no longer uh, doing the comprehensive security that it's designed to do. Um, Let me just interrupt real quickly. To be clear, uh, Mike Kersinger provided us the firewall credentials a couple of days ago. So after that other meeting, so we could access the old firewall. Right. So. Got in there, looked we, we, around. We, I'm sorry, when you say it's expired, does that mean they do that if they effectively did not have a firewall or it just wasn't up? No, oh, it's still a firewall doing basic level uh, protection, but some of the things that are just uh, considered standard business practice for uh, secure firewall uh, were not enabled anymore. Um, among those would be uh, gateway antivirus, anti spyware, intrusion prevention, um, content filtering. Um, software and firmware updates. Those were all included in those updates. So yes, even a known vulnerability from the manufacturer, if they had programmed the device wrong and they put a fix out for that, you wouldn't get that. So, um, so we logged in there, took a look at some of the other things. We also found there's actually a couple of IO devices on the network that show some vulnerabilities that need addressed too. Um, so uh, this one is, you know, we're recommending to replace it. What what kind of IO devices are they? <laughs> um, there's it's showing um, unpatched going to um, a DVR at McFarland. So, so camera recorder or something? Yeah. So there's some uh, well-known websites that show exposed IO devices, and you can type in an IP address and see if there's anything 
exposed there. So uh, people's home webcams could show up in there. Anything in the world, literally. So when you look these up, uh, you can see that. Um, so we recommend just, you know, doing some replacing it. We have something available that can fill that gap and secure it. And uh, that can be done very quickly without uh, much interruption or the new firewall. Mm -hmm. Can you please explain when that was purchased, why it was purchased, what we're doing with it now? Yeah, so Water Resources purchased the firewall. Uh, it's been uh, sitting at McFarland. Uh, we had put that, uh, we had purchased that uh, with some plans in place to maybe offer a different type of connection down there, and that never came to fruition. So over the weekend, uh, somebody went and grabbed it and brought it here so we could reuse that out at 470, if that's- uh, Why couldn't you use the firewall that was currently at the facility? Um, to do that, you'd need to get it up to date, re-enable subscriptions. Um, it's not a firewall that we use on <laughs> other locations, um, but theoretically you could do that. It would take some more time. I think time is the major factor there. Does the other one, was that in the box still? Uh, no, no, it was uh, active. They were using it? The new, no, the new it, one? No, uh, the one that we have to, that's available to use. Yeah. Uh, it's been powered on and receiving updates, so we know it's in but it, condition. What, was, it, was it doing something? Was it firewalling anything? No, it was pretty much just available. Just hanging there no getting updates. So. Yeah, I think with some of the things that have been going on, that project just kind of got halted. So. It's nice that we have it. Yeah. So where are we at with the replacing? You're going to use that one to replace the one that's out of date. Yeah, I'd like to. It, it's also more. It's also got baked in security, such as multi-factor authentication. Um, the current firewall had a very poor password on it. Um, things like that. Uh, How many characters was that password? I've got it over there. It, it was Nine. probably it was very short, and it had admin in the password, so shouldn't have said that. <laughs> it's been changed and updated, so that doesn't matter now. I either. thought the password was password when I got the. No, email. no, we did. But that's eight characters. Eight characters yeah. Just out of an abundance of caution, we did update the password and change it, just in lieu of the threat we had. So. So going forward, assuming we do the the migration, the domains, all the stuff is properly should that firewall most likely won't be utilized then as the traffic for water goes through GCOB instead of 470 possibly any other questions for Andy regarding the fire oh well I guess when would we be ready to light the firewall which would basically give communication to the balance of the machines sure we uh, we act Put in all the settings this afternoon, this morning, so it's ready to go. Just need physical access to the site. So you, need, you need to get into their facility. Mm -hmm. Yep. Have it in 470, correct? Yeah, and it, it'd probably be a good thing just to be overly cautious to have somebody available at McFarland when we did that. Okay. Do you have reason to believe that the password on the old firewall had been reset within the last year, let's say? Yeah, the way the password looked. I don't don't say what it is. Right. Uh, the way the password looked, it. it Looked like it was done last year. Okay, so we, we have a pretty high. We believe that password has been changed with no effect on everything else. Correct. Okay, so we're well, we can always go back to that password if we. Yeah, and I had to. and I updated the password over the weekend, and it didn't have any effect on the plant that we know of. Got it. Right, but the concern is switching out the actual physical firewalls later on. Right, what could potentially happen at Farland without right. a firewall managing traffic going there. Because as everyone knows, wonder where the historian server is located at 470, not at the plant. Right. That goes through the firewall. I guess, you guys know yeah. Go ahead. I, I, I just had, since we're talking about passwords, a real point of confusion for me. So last year, when, when ADP changed these passwords for the server, allegedly that caused a uh, plant shutdown at McFarland. But these servers have been offline for a week and there's no plant shutdown. Is the plant operating? Well, uh, we've cut them off from our network. But they're I mean, they're not working, right? I mean, if no, there is some activity. The there's a, if, if, if they're going through a back door, 
they could theoretically still be talking to the servers. But it's for multiple. I thought once when we cut off the switch, there's no there's no wind stream. But there's a direct line between McFarland and that that room. Yeah. Is that actually like a goes fiber to, line that runs physically I don't know, runs? Is it fiber? It's, yeah, they've got a spectrum uh, link. That, I mean, we we believe that the other servers are not affecting. We we think the server we have to be cautious of is the OT server. That's the Wonderware server, which has not been shut down. Which has not even been shut. You haven't even powered that off, right, Mike? You didn't. Okay. You haven't updated it. You haven't tested it. We haven't At logged all. into it. Nothing. That's separate from all these other servers. Yeah, it's in the same cluster, I guess, lack of a better word. It's okay. in the same building, but it's it's not been. We've not so I guess it. I guess if you if you hook up the firewall at 470, why are you worried about McFarland? If Just because of. We're worried about unhooking the existing firewall and if that manages any of the traffic from the Wonderware server to McFarland and then hook up a new one. There's going to be a point in time where there's no firewall. We just think it'd be prudent to have people ready just in case. It just because of past practice, if you're, I, we don't want to have fingers pointing and we want this to be a controlled change. Okay, so, so the firewall that is compromised is the one that's on the OT server. That's actually- It's actually on everything. I know it's on everything, but the OT server is still using it. Uh, could be. Yeah, there's- The one that expired February 17th. Yeah, it, it acts as a gateway for that network. Um, okay. The servers at 470 on their different, are on a different IP scheme than the OT stuff. And so when they try to hop between the two networks, they use that as a, a routing point. Okay. Any other questions for me? Okay, um, we're going to move to the water resource password policy for servers and end users. So um, I guess Zach and Joe are both going to address this, right? Yeah, I think Zach's. Zach yeah, primarily. I, think I, could, I could do. I'm still talking here. <sighs> I have our um, multi-factor authentication and password policy that I'll pass around here. Um, By us, you mean this is this ADP? This ADP board policy that was passed last year. Um, as a board, you guys decided to, to, to pass this. Um, and it goes over our current password policy for um, user accounts and authentication for those accounts. Um, I, I want to start off with a little bit of background on, on passwords currently with the current environment of passwords in the world. Um, currently, if you have a non complex 10 uh, character password, it can be cracked instantly with the technology that's out there right now. And if you have a really powerful system, you can do a fast. You, you know, you could do you could do higher ones faster or more complex ones faster. Um, Basically, passwords are broken in our current environment. Um, and so there's a couple things we have to do to protect ourselves with our accounts, right? <clears throat> um, so the first thing is you, know, you need a long, complex password. And the second thing is you need a second or more forms of authentication more than just your password. Um, globally, this has been recognized as the way to go. Uh, passwords are so broken, they'll probably go away eventually, but we have to be really careful with, you know, passwords right now. Um, and you can see on that chart that they're passing around. That gives you an idea of how long it can take to, to crack a password. Um, like I said, with a more powerful system, it can be done even quicker than what that says. This is just a computer at home, by the way. This isn't any supercomputer. This is your computer at home can do it this way. That's all it takes. Um, so our current password policy uh, for user accounts is 25 character passwords, uh, complex passwords, I should say, as a minimum. Um, we do that for these reasons that you're seeing in front of you there. We wanted to get ahead of this. That chart is moving down constantly where it says instant every year. It's instant is going down another character. Um, we obviously wanted to get ahead of that. We don't want to have to change our policy every year. Um, and with new advances in technology like AI and that type of stuff, you might see 
20 character pass, it might just jump, you know, to 20 character passwords soon, right? So we want to be ahead of the game. 25 character passwords made the most sense to us. Um, along with two-factor authentication as a bare minimum necessary. Um, this act, you're talking just workstations, correct? We are, we're deeper than that and servers. So yeah, that is a, uh, that's a minimum across the board, but other things have higher minimums, right? And um, so this doesn't really go into detail on admin accounts or service accounts on that uh, policy, but as an internal guideline for us, we've been constantly trying to improve ourselves and police ourselves, right? Uh, with the type of uh, password notifications that we use for admin accounts and service accounts. Um, just so everybody is on the same page, an administrative account is any account with privileges more than a standard user account. Um, any amount of privilege added to an account, it becomes an administrative account. <clears throat> um, internally, we're working on segmenting our administrative accounts uh, and moving those to a, a higher password count than 25 characters. Um, for security reasons, um, we're not going to say the exact password count, but uh, it is higher than the 20, considerably higher than the 25 character passwords. Uh, that the user accounts have to use. And um, we're also looking at implementing uh, three factor authentication on those as well. <coughs> so even an additional form from what you guys have to use. Um, additionally, service accounts, also called machine accounts, are privileged accounts that are used by software or machines. They're not user accounts, right? So these are accounts that you put it into you put it into a system and it runs you know hopefully for a long time without being bothered um, these types of accounts you know you audit differently and you watch specifically because they can have um, very high permissions on the network and uh, if somebody were to get into them they could do a lot of damage so they have to be protected at a higher rate because a user would know would potentially know if something was happening with their account with a service account you may there's no one if there's no one watching it, it may not be as noticed, right? So, you know, we're putting things in place to audit those types of accounts and watch what they're doing, but we're also greatly increasing uh, what's required for the passwords on those accounts. Again, we're not going to say the exact password count, character count for those, uh, but I can safely say it well exceeds over 100 characters. Uh, there's no need for a user to know the password for these. You don't need to memorize them. Uh, you know, they're stored safely in a password vault and only accessed if you absolutely need to. Uh, so, so, Zach, if I could, that's our policy. Yes. What did you find on the water resource servers that you did deep dives on to make sure that they were secure? Without saying the password, Andy. Current um, water passwords are not what I would consider secure. How many characters? Let's give a ballpark. Under, well, under 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 25? Far under 20. Under 15? Yes. Under 10. Close enough. There are some under 10. Okay. I get it. Um, so would they, I guess, without getting too specific, would they be in the instantly yes. tapped? Yes. Okay. So they're in the. And, and were they instantly. all the same or are they all different? The lengthwise or? No. From server to server. I Once don't know the answer to that one. Who, who does know that? Mike, you know. Uh, were the passwords the same for every server? They, and if they add another character, pretty much standard, but they added a character here and a character. They could may put a hash sign after it or a couple of hashes and exclamation, but pretty much the same, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to also mention that the bad practice that we've also seen that should not be followed is as with a service account, uh, different service accounts should be used for every single service. Um, it shouldn't be reused. You shouldn't have one account that is used for all the service accounts. You shouldn't have one account that's used for all the administrator accounts. Um, different accounts should be created for different purposes. Um, you know, and so there is overlap in that environment, um, and that's an extremely bad practice. Each one should be built specifically for that uh, purpose of whatever it's being built for. Or do you feel comfortable putting those servers back online with the passwords they currently have? I, no, I, I, I don't. Let, let me be clear that not just that, but also user accounts. So, so I that's going to bring up. 
Well, we'll get to the vulnerabilities. Yeah. So, so the item that will be before the board to decide is: Do we change those server passwords to be within policy? Um, and just so everybody knows, we we made that recommendation. And you remember who you made it to, Frank? Was it Steve or was it to Steve? And he indicated he would not accept a change of those passwords. That they would result in plant shutting down. So okay. we need to. Well, we know that isn't true. Well, we need to debate that. Okay. To, to be fair, I think it would be prudent if we're going to change these passwords, um, then we should prepare for the worst. And and water resources should get an OT person at McFarland. I think that's probably the most mission critical. And when we make these changes, they have somebody there. And we will know. I mean, I, it will not happen two weeks after we change password. It will happen immediately. The last event we had at McFarland, the reason why I do not suspect passwords as being the case, is passwords had been changed for two days. Two days. And then the problem happened. That's not how passwords work. Once they're changed, the credentials change. They don't, there, there's no delay. <clears throat> so, but just to be on the safe side, you should have people there. We'll have people here. We can make a password change. If something goes awry, we change it back. If it doesn't go awry, we go to the next server, make a password change and see what happens. Do you agree, Frank? I do. I do want to say there is a long term short term where those servers won't be operational anyway there won't be need for them once we consolidate the domain the dc will be gone once we consolidate sharepoint with m365 and that's lit we'll be migrating files to sharepoint onedrive so we won't need the file share anymore um beam would go away alan we're looking at great lakes at that point for the backup so quite honestly in two to three weeks if we do this right we would be those servers would all be shut down anyway so it is a short-term problem but Having them lit in the meantime with a very short password is incredibly dangerous. Again. That, that's a board decision. I'm not making that decision. You're talking about that now, or do you guys want to go on? You, I, we could do it now if you prefer. I, I mean, listen, the law is clear that water resources falls under ADP. The board voted for this password policy. This should this should be implemented for them immediately. They should be subject to our, all their users, all their servers should be subject to our policies. There are servers. There are workstations now. It's over. It's over. We're not doing this anymore. They don't have the authority to operate their own system legally. We're not letting them. I, I don't know. I mean, they can't. They can't be connected to our net. If they insist on going on back online with their instantly hacked passwords, then they just aren't going to be on the network. I mean, they. they and that is an option to be clear. We can just leave those servers off as we do the migration on the back end, and they almost never need to be spun up again to need to pull the data to populate the I guess what do we need? Them. What what would be the need to bring those servers online? Well, yeah. they've got to get access to their files. I mean, they, they could be internally on their network, but if they're remote and want to get access to their files, they have a file share server, right? One of those is a file share server. So they've got to you got to be able to get to those files. The DC most likely doesn't need to be lit, though, assuming we do the consolidation or do we need it for the consolidation? Which one's that? Which is the domain controller? Oh. Anybody okay. have an idea? You don't need that anymore because it's on the cloud, right? Uh, well, do we come over to us? Then it, it doesn't ever need to be lit even to migrate, right? Okay. So then the file share does because that has all their files on it right now, unless you store them locally. Yeah, your local machine. And then Veeam, I think we'd like to get into. That's their back. And verify the backups are legit because there could be a you know a solid backup that should translate to to Great Lakes to exchange yeah and to exchange. exchange and to exchange to get the database ultimately right or out of Veeam so we may not even right exchange. Well, what couldn't you just fire those up like and not have them hooked up to any network to pull the data well, right the virtual boxes so Mike will you. I just did. <laughs> can those can those virtual servers be spun up in isolation mode? Uh, yeah, sure. To pull the data, but then again, they're pretty isolated now. Well, yeah, but we haven't we haven't let diffuse yet. Yeah. 
we're, we're, we're seeing. I, I don't know. I mean, that's hard more work for you. I, 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 I still would. I would still just because of what happened the first time in McFarland. I think it would be prudent to make sure Water Resources has an OT vendor on standby or at the facility. They be on alert. They be ready with people in case everything goes wrong, and then there's no issue. And, and we do this in a method, in a method, a methodology that we can control the outcome. If something goes awry, we revert. Well, who's going to arrange that? Because they, I mean, they were real responsive to you guys over the weekend. I noticed. I mean, Jerry. I think Jerry said he's in charge of water resources, so he should be able to. We should be able to work through him. That's what the board votes for. Do whatever needs to be done. Well, I'm not that. Well, I think that if we do vote for anything, it should also join with the fact that an OT vendor on site at McFarland while this goes on would be very valuable in case something happens again. So some of these are trying to get out. I'll say, I do want to get back. It's not necessarily more work not to light the servers and we'll suck the data in the back end. It would delay the end users in getting their data. That's the issue. What data did, I guess, look, April 12th is when no. Okay, but Wednesday. what data do they need? So obviously emails are the billing. Where's what's what's billing, where's the billing what's is billing? Is that the server the billing? Then? Whatever's in their file share, I don't know. I mean, I went <clears throat> back and forth a little bit with Kathleen, and she had a great workaround for payroll. She did a really good job with that, and didn't need to get into her file share, which was good. But at some point, but I mean, people see their files long term. Got to get back. Yeah, they do. well, they do have to get back. Get it. The point is, do they need to get back today, or can they wait two weeks and then we never like that server until we suck the data out? That that's the difference here. Is the data on a workstation? No, um, I think that she had a separate backup in place. Or, or maybe I think Kersinger had a separate backup in place for payroll, which was air gapped, which she was then able to utilize. It, it required her doing some extra work. She did a good job with that. As far as I know, she turned the payroll on. There, there is data that is needed immediately because we've got customers who have owned their own water and wastewater operation plants that we do their tests at the lab. We have the results, but there's no way to get them, get that data to them. Then waiting for the new environment doesn't make sense if it's needed immediately and changing the server passwords and lighting them back up and allowing the users to have access to it would be the better approach. So yeah, get they need it right away. Then they, I mean, in a perfect world, I would say you just build them a new system that's on our system and then only utilize their equipment for data recovery. But, but it doesn't sound like that's an option because they need this stuff. When you say immediately, I, I, not trying to be a lawyer here, but you mean within the next 24 to 48 hours immediately? Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we owe them, we owe those clients the reports, and, and they, that makes sense. That's, that's, that's why that's the point yeah. about it. So, Jerry, I guess to, what what would be your preference? Would it be to encourage the board to allow the, the passwords as they currently exist, or would it be to do this controlled password change to a policy, and then if we have to revert, we revert? Provided we can get staffing at McFarland in the event of an upset. Well, I mean, my my preference would be if we can get the, the passwords changed without causing you know without causing an issue, and I don't have any problem with that. The the concern that it was my understanding was it's just the worry of a of a you know continual down the line of changing something and it having that effect. But if there's a way to you know make those changes. To get to you know get to a more secure password without causing that problem, I'm, I'm fine with doing that kind of change. I think that point it makes a lot of sense. If you then have some OT vendor on site, their HGR, they know what they or know even, that environment. Or even on call, not necessarily on site. You have, as long as the plant person. My understanding was McFarland issued last time. You wanted the plant people to be on notice, right? Because you were staging trucks if you have to haul stuff. Right. right. Exactly. If, can that be done in a pretty I think, can, I think we can do that in a pretty time. I mean, so if we attempt, if we do this password change to higher credentials and we do it coordinated with you having the staff ready <coughs> and nothing goes wrong, then we just let it run. If we have a problem, we could always revert back to the other password scheme. Yeah, I would assume so, yes. Okay. Well, and again, I think this is going to hinge on another part and specifically okay. discussing Wonderware, but okay, that, that makes a lot so of sense. So you want to wait till we're all done to make any motions and votes, or what do you want to do? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you it, know, seems, two, it seems there's only two more elements redundant, but I mean, what, the vote is going to be to, to force our password policy on that. 
Well, which should be under anyway. But whatever you guys want to okay. make, so, make a motion, I'll make a motion, but they, they should be operating under our password anyway. Let's circle back to the motions after we're done with There's two other agenda items. Uh, the next one is the Wonderware relocation. Frank's going to address this. So be advised, this Wonderware we're talking about, that's a storage box for archived historical data in a SQL server database called InSQL. And that's taking data that's being generated from McFarland through a, a backdoor direct connect. It's being fed to 470, and that's where the data is being stored. We have not touched that box, but the fact that that box is integral to all these other servers <coughs> kind of makes this a problem because you can't move, you can't just move one thing without a bunch of things moving. And it's on top of it, it's not a hard server, it's a virtual server. So it's it's got to be spun up somewhere else if it's going to be moved, which is to Frank's. Yeah, so we've talked about this now for a year, year and a half. That I mean, ultimately, water resources needs to leave 470. I mean, I don't know what commissioner's plans are, but I know that ultimately you believe that they need to leave. They're out of GCOB, they're out of McFarland, the shop, the lab, all that sort of thing, right? So there's no place for the Wonderware server to be at 470 anymore. I think the preference is to have an air gapped situation at McFarland. Um, I think you've even looked into that. Yes. So I, that's that's even better. So. I guess what what does that look like in in spinning up that virtual from 470 to McFarland and moving that because I feel like once that's in its own little separate OT environment we're much more secure in terms of how IT and OT work together and they don't screw each other up kind of thing but we don't want them touching anyway that that just opens everything up so what's your estimation of that move of the Wonderware server from 470 to McFarland time all that sort of thing how quickly could we get that done so that we don't have to worry about that sort of Damocles on the other end here. That it, I'd have to verify this, but I believe that could be done in less than a week. Good. I mean, maybe even maybe even by the end of this week, but I have to double check with it. Yeah, that that so, would I think reduce a so lot that of does is the pipeline then doesn't have to exist, right? right. I mean that's really exactly that gets, I believe that, the, my understanding that gets it completely off the county's network. Yeah. And that was the concern yes. that was expressed by the county was it was, you know, you had that connected to, to the county network. And if somebody were able to get into that, then they could get into the county network. So that would get it off of that. Well, I think the bigger concern is if somebody got into the county network and then got into the OT network and then yeah. messed with people's water over there. I, right. We were concerned about the reverse of that. Right. Well, that's a, yeah. Yeah. from our perspective, it's not getting into our system. Yeah. But, yeah you, you, that's my, my perspective. Too, was you guys not being, not getting into there and causing an issue with the county. Yeah, wastewater system. treatment plants are absolute targets. So if, could you then work with Mike Kersinger to just handle that OT side of things? Just spin that up as quickly as possible, move that. We'll obviously do whatever we think we need to do, but I don't think there is very much. Is there anything this board has to do? Did, did we already approve? Did, did you, wasn't there a quote floating around about this? I believe there might have been, but I don't know whatever happened. Could, we could take some action to approve that today. Could is this we? the mission system? No, no, no it's not mission. Something so if we haven't, we could do it. And if we've already done it, who cares? So this is the OT. This would be this, this is, is basically what we want relocating OT. their OT server to McFar. Yeah. I don't know why it was going to be done. Now there were a lot of historical reasons for that. I think the board can vote to authorize water resources to deploy an OT yeah. company to move the Wonderware server to McFar. Right. Okay, so would that um, the second? Okay, second discussion. Um, would that include all things that don't need to be on the um, interface with the county's network, or is it just this one? Thing? We're just talking about migrating the Wonderware server from 470 all, to McFarland. All, unless I unless I don't. I mean, I mean maybe there's others. I don't know. Yeah, I've got the footprint of what we think is in that. Okay. Down to 470. <clears throat> Jerry may be able to. I mean, the only one that I see there that's SCADA related to McFarland okay. is that Wonderware server. Now, there's another. The mission part is in that facility as well. But we're not. We're not talking. No. We're not dealing with that. Okay. That's not. In that's the, not a problem. Well, it's not on the virtual servers that we're dealing with right now. Okay. Okay. So it's these server clusters we're trying to get back online and populated, and I think Wonderware is the only one that's. Am I missing something? I, I believe that's true myself, but I, I don't 
deal with it on a daily basis. Yep. So I want to verify it, of course. Yeah, I mean, is from that the diagram. one that they're that the expired firewall's hooked up to that's communicating well, look, it with the it's, other ones? It's, that, the whole, it's that whole complex. Okay. Right. So you can take that out of the mix. Exactly. Yeah, the, the firewall should block, should prevent anything in that building. And then we need, we're working way down, down the food chain. So we have a firewall in play here. We have these other IT servers. And somehow there's this intertwining between the OT server, the Wonderware one, and removing Wonderware from the issue. Yeah. Removing the OT would make everything that, that would make life a lot easier. We don't think that there's any other connector, but what we'll yeah. do is when we do this password changing on these other servers, we'll find out right away. Because if there is a connection, we're going to need an OT vendor then to go find where that connection is and what do you do to change it to a good password? That makes yeah, sense. Let, me, let me double check on that too, because moving that Wonderware server down there may eliminate that issue with the changing of the passwords or concern of changing the passwords. But I think that's controlling the operation of McFarland and it wouldn't you know have that connection anymore. I think it does. You, yeah. you might you might eliminate that concern, that issue. Well I, I think you're right. And I think that is gonna we're gonna find what I'm trying to hedge the bet that people don't no, I I, I, I don't disagree about still having somebody yeah, down there I'm just be ready I, to go okay. if something did happen, but I think that might that might eliminate that. Okay. That possibly. Any other questions on the Wonderware part of this <coughs> server? There's been a motion or a second. Oh, sorry. You were talking and I was not writing any of that. <laughs> okay. There's so, a recording. Yeah, there's a recording. Yeah, the motion is essentially to authorize water resources to relocate their Wonderware the server. To hire an OT vendor. Yeah. To. Yeah, I don't think and that if that involves hiring an OT vendor to do it, then they can do it. No, I don't think that can be done in-house. I think it requires an OT vendor. That's fine. And hire any necessary vendors needed to facilitate. So you have a maximum dollar amount? Twenty five more than fifty. No, I you remember what the I want to say I don't remember out of fifty that much. I think it was seven thousand, five to seven thousand. Yeah, it's mostly yeah, it's that, it, yeah, it was think, well under I think twenty five covers yeah. it. I mean Yeah, you do twenty five that <clears> definitely <throat> not to exceed twenty five thousand. That's your motion, I seconded. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Last item. <clears throat> is the uh, end user patching and vulnerabilities. Zach, again, I'm gonna, sorry to keep tapping you, but what, what do you see from that end user perspective that we're gonna need to, to dive into and make changes? Sure. Um, so uh, our scans are showing that uh, the workstations are not up to date. Um, they're probably not being regularly updated by any type of scheduler or anything like that. Um, so uh, we do want to move their workstations minus the OT ones that touch their OT system uh, into our uh, weekly update scheduler. Uh, and it should take care of the vulnerabilities that are present on those systems there. And then you know anything else can be addressed manually, but it should take care of the majority of, of that. But it's it's likely that yeah they're not under any type of regular scheduler. So again, they would move into our regular policy for doing that. Um, I asked Mike Kersinger directly, what are the, the machines that are considered OT that we would not want to patch? There could be no problem with doing that, but why take the risk again when we're talking about underwear and all that stuff? He gave three that are specific to OT and then his own workstation here, and we would omit those from the automatic Where patching. Where are those three? They are at, there are three are at McFarland. Oh, and then he has uh, No, sorry, two are at McFarland and one is at the shop or the lab. One's at the shop. One's at the shop. And one here, one is here? His is here, yeah. So we do not want to, so j just so the board knows, as a general rule, when you have OT operational, you don't want to do automatic patching because there are collisions that can occur with an automatic patch on an application software product. So in the case of Wonderware for SCADA, for example, they test their product to a version of the operating system and a patch level of the operating system. If a new patch comes down, you have to wait for them to give you a release before you put the patch in place and then you load their update. So because that takes coordination, you generally do those patches of the operating system manually. You get that update, you have them both there, you do one, then you do the other. We don't have that ability and nor do we want to touch the OT stuff. So as a result, we're, we're just going to rule out whatever water resources says, these are OT stations. So we won't touch them, we won't update them. They shouldn't be on our network theoretically so but that is a concern to well yeah that was going to be my question was 
Okay, I understand. So there's a couple down in McFarland. They're not on our network. Who cares, right? One at the shop. I don't Is know. the shop on our network? Are they? Uh, no. You can, you can see it. Right? Yeah. So basically, the same type of connection that goes between 470 and uh, McFarland, there is a link that goes to the shop. Last I knew, it was only connected to one computer that did something with the fuel system. It got Phoenix, maybe. All right, so that's not McFarland. That's actually. Oh, no, it, it does. It links. Yeah, links. If they take advantage of it. Yeah, I don't have a problem with those, but then Kurtzinger's machine up here is not. I mean, this I'm is the guy who didn't match the exchange service. Is he monitoring SCADA from here? Yes. Guess what? He's going to drive down to the shop to monitor it. We're not having a computer in this building. Well, there's it's other ways. There's other ways he could monitor. He could use, you know, a, a virtual cellular. A, no, a virtual image. He could look at the image without running the software. Is he actually running the software here? I don't believe so. But I have to, again, the double check. So maybe that one could be patched. I'm simply saying this is the list I got that he requested not to be patched. So, so the box that he's doing that on though, that's on our. That would be on our network then. Right. Yes, I, that's that's an issue. Well, I think the larger issue is with the Wonderware move that that whole network should then be maintained. Yeah. <laughs> can you get everything off the network? Yeah, we can. And that's what should. Everything. But I, I see the value in remotely being able to see what's going on at the plant. But There's, then that's not. But that should be cloud based, right? So right. you're not running right. software on your box. You can be updated. Exactly. Go to the cloud. Yep. See the status. You're not turning on a valve. You can't you do that from here. You're crazy. Right, so I'm hoping we're not doing that. I think they're just monitoring. They're mon they should be seeing. Are there any alarms? Are the tanks full? Is there a valve that's showing a problem? Mm -hmm. And that should be done through an arbitrator, right? You should have the plant here, and then something here that's arbitrating that that information. Maybe we should look at. We should, we're going to need to figure that out. Do you need the board to take action on this, or what? Yeah, yeah. So there's two actions that I see as a result. One is this password policy. Are we going to invoke the password policy for everything so are we going to follow our policy i support that policy i mean i think everybody within the county should but i mean i just think it's good practice that everybody i mean you know maybe five six years ago that was okay to get away with you know because i mean i you know you got me thinking about my personal stuff and how you know passwords but um you know i think everybody needs to get with the times and, and really pump that, get that, you know, a little more secure. So um, I have no problem, you know, supporting that motion through uh, the entire county. You know. so I'll make a motion that we move all policies um, under the authority of ADP to the policy that's already been approved by this board um, as soon as possible, taking into account that with these select few servers that we want to do that in a controlled manner right if there uh, is so an so issue we'll we'll, we'll address, address it that is a one-off so move all policies when all passwords i'm sorry yeah yes yeah yeah sorry I was down. okay and I, I, why do we have to have a motion to enforce the policy well because there well, may be an exception that, that may come under our policy in the case that we have an upset which i'm not taking the liability of saying we're going to leave for lack of a better number, seven character passwords out there. So we're we going to do this for all the departments. No, all the other departments are in compliance. How do you know that? Because we can, we we have the ability of seeing this stuff on our network. Well, I think the issue here is we have a policy. We have Steve Olich saying no, you can't do that. I I just don't think I don't want to make that. This I don't want to go to jail. Well, we I just want to understand why he's saying no. Like, is he saying no just to be? No, his, his reason, his reason was, was you're going to shut down, the, you're going to okay. break everything else. Okay. That was his. And if that's, you know, I don't know if that's we'll true. We'll figure that out when right. we go to do this. Right. right. But that wouldn't, that shouldn't affect workstations, right? A workstation I, in here should not see why it would affect the workstation. Yeah, I mean, well, right, but we're also talking about applying to the server. Exactly, which it could. Like I think you know, remember the um, what's the key card or not the key card things the uh, the the uh, keep the fobs CrowdStrike or the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, gatekeeper. I mean, I know at first you know rolling that out, people are kind of like him hawing around, but I think we got no resistance. But I mean, but I think it's such a. <laughs> but I think now you know it's become a part, just a part of your daily routine, right? Just and uh, Actually, we've got people that yeah. once they even after the 15 character was invoked and then 25. 
they're okay with it. Right. You just they phrases just, that you know. You just it's not that hard. Right. But this you're right. This boils it down to easier yeah. than it was before. And if we can yeah. start, you know, turning our focus towards doing that and, and bumping that up the security level, I think it's a good move just from standpoint whether it's a policy or not, but and enforcing it or however, but I think the entire county should start doing that. You know, even if they're not now. So is that a second to the motion? Yes. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion stands approved. The last thing is this end user patching and vulnerabilities. So um, just because water resources workstations are not end user current, are is the board willing to pass a resolution? Because we don't have a policy to that. We just do it. We just do it with all of our. Um, we, we need to push the latest version of workstation um, revisions to each of these workstations and water resources before they come back under the network. Is that reasonable? You control all these now, right? Well, we don't water resources. We will once we start flipping these switches. So why do you have to get permission to do this? Because this? we've got people from water resources on record saying you're not going to do this. Yep. And I don't want to be the only guy right, with an arrow. The director and IT guy aren't even here. I mean, the... They, they've been a problem all weekend. They've been obstructionists. So, so you just this is a backup, saying the board. I want the members. I want this action to be a board action, not a Chuck or Frank action, because I don't want the ramifications from that. We'll do the work. They're still going to play today. Well, I, that's okay, but at least there's a record that the board decided to do this. Okay, what is it? I'll make the motion. Uh, it's a motion to take all end user patching to current. Uh, to eliminate vulnerabilities as described by minus the OT minus, minus any OT many minus any OT workstations workstations not hurting ourselves he's running the computer out of this building he's not our it, no Jerry can, can you can you check this you can get in his little van and drive down somewhere but I'm for no all right so if if we can okay I'll make that make that motion except for except for the O, except for OT workstations at McFarland and at the lab. Okay. okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Hey, can, I, can I just ask you, sorry, but just McFarland and the lab, or what about the garage? I didn't hear there was anything at the Yeah, garage. I heard one, well, what do you call the shop? What's that? That's the garage. Oh, okay. What's, the, sorry. what's the lab? Aren't they the, the same lab building right here? Cool. No, the lab, the lab is down by our infirmary right. wastewater. So, who got the garage, there's no OT the server at the <coughs> OT no. workstations at the lab. I don't think there is. Is there? No, it's McFarland the shop. It's McFarland the shop. There is no OT. So, I think the lab you're talking about is at McFarland? No. no, the lab is down, is right down here. Down, down by the infirmary wastewater. So, there's the two across from the engineers, the shop. No. So, it's next to the county home. Correct. Across the no. that's that's the shop or the garage, depending on who's on first. The lab is by the county owned. Lab is on county owned county own property at the wastewater. I didn't know they had anything over there. Really? So do they have a workstation? You don't have a workstation. Wasn't that always the lab? They have a workstation there, but I don't know if it's, <laughs> it's a business machine. Okay. No, I mean it's fine if you, if you guys know it's not working. Josh, you, 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 know, you know, guys know it's not on team. Instead of lab, shop. Sorry. Yeah. So two at McFarland, one at the shop is what I said. Yes. Yes. All right, so now we have a motion to second. Thank you for clarification. All in favor? Yes. Uh, any opposed? All right, motion stands for Any other questions regarding any of this stuff before we can get back to work? Well, we have a couple of other issues. So in terms of the firewall that we need physical access to force. Oh, yeah, this is the firewalls. So yeah. we could do a go live with the firewall and do the switch. Again, there's the potential that it could impact. I, I would just ask that we do these one at a time. Let's do one thing, see the effect. Next thing, see the effect. I think the firewall is the first thing that needs to be done. Well, I asked you, you're not going to talk to these servers otherwise. Right, Andy? I would, I would recommend that first. So when are you ready to pull the trigger? I'm ready right now. Jerry, can you arrange for him to get access to that room in order to pull the trigger? Yes. And then we'll have to, then we'll spin it over to Mike We'll then have to spring up these servers, correct? Yes, Scott. May I be recognized? Sure. Okay. Um, that's not going to affect any other uh, operations at 470. No. No, it's not. We're not going to reconnect. Are you not touching that switch, this shared switch? No, this isn't affecting it. 
uh, create more separation between you and the water resources. Is there any other um, equipment at 470 besides that server that can be moved? Or All of the servers are there. Uh, well, our goal would be, I think I asked, I think I understand your question. Once the Wonderware one is out of there, yep. our goal would be to move everything else that's there. That's what I was wondering. That's our goal. Okay. Now, physically, some of those things will move into space. Right. Because we can do cloud-based stuff. But we want to first get the OT component out of this equation. Okay. Because so I guess my question was then, is there any other OT that doesn't necessarily uh, need to be on the backbone of the network, like besides that? <laughs> Well, there is the, the mission stuff. That's what I was wondering. That's all cellular, though. Well, it is, but it's coming out of that room. I think there's a. Is there a cellular reader or something in there Whoop. that populates these mission list stations and all that stuff? I think so. That's what I was kind of getting. What is Ellie and Jerry for mission? 470, the mission stuff. Where was the plan to move that? Um, I don't know on that. I think it was actually in, just a bit to the garage. <coughs> McFarland. Would that go to McFarland? It could go to my, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just, yeah. it is cellular, so it's out. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. McFarland would be here to show we have good cellular. You know, I don't know, like, okay, so I don't want to comment. That's something things, that water resources will have to figure out. Yep. It's OT. Okay. <coughs> but you're okay with, uh, in theory, this board's okay, in theory, moving that out at some point. Yeah, I think when you're ready to do that. Not right away, but. Just, some point. Whatever action the board needs to take to give authority to water okay. users, I think you should yep. bring that argument. Bring it to the board for. Yeah, I mean, I, again, okay. to repeat, I know you and I have talked personally, yep. but I don't have any, there's nobody here that's talking OT. We're okay. not OT experts. Yep, that's and fine. We don't want to become OT. I view this just like the sheriff controlling cells. And Perfect. That, I, I, there's a lot of people that have OT in their facility. That clears a lot up. And, yep. and so we should be IT driven, and, and the confusion and the problem I think we've had. Yep is OT and IT have done this at Water Resources a little bit too much maybe, and we need we need to break those apart. Agreed. Until we do that, we're gonna be always in this mess. Thank you. Yeah. So what, can we set a time to meet at 470 then? At 3 yeah, p.m.? sooner the better to get started. <coughs> yeah. Just because if something goes wrong, I don't want Andy to be here all night long again, because I, I will tell you, we've had people round the clock since the event so i mean there there's a lot of tired i want to get this done and over with and we can move on all right 3 p.m at 4 70 to do the firewall switch and then what about these other email addresses these alert ones this um i mean i know you've asked for it repeatedly and you're harassing kurtzinger by asking him to help you but um can, can we try to get those for somebody well again i think we have the ability that if we if we do end up lighting up these servers and we do get into theme, and if there is an exchange case. Instead of like you guys going on a you know Let's scavenger just, hunt, why don't they just tell Nick, you? Nick, you were gonna say something. Do you do you have the ability to use these email addresses when you just we'll work on that list, just uh, everything else that's communicating? Because it knows you'll get from your SCADA systems and all these things reporting, right? I'm sure you got all the different emails. And you must have junk mailboxes to collect stuff. The junk info, stuff like that. Yeah. So you'll need to give us that list and then we'll we'll work to make that happen. But right now we're trying to get people up and running. I think the last one then is the go live for email, um, getting updates from Mark and Jared and, and they're getting real close now. They've got to tweak the quote. There's some licensing issues, some things have gone up, but we'll pretty much be ready to go live tonight. So are we doing that? Are we spinning up new email addresses? I wouldn't, I thought that's what we Well, we're, we're assuming the firewall goes up okay. Wait, well, it would be on, I mean, say, yeah. Oh, it's in the cloud, right? Yeah, it would be pretty unrelated. Oh, that's true. That's true. They say it. I can confirm at 3 p.m. We'll be there at 3 p.m. At the 470. Okay. Uh, back to email. So are we good on the go live for email then? That's what we told you. Yeah, we're saying work, right? right? That's the plan for this evening. Then. Hopefully we'll have email by tomorrow. So I just. Wait, so how are you going to push it to the workstations for you? So that's a great question. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be the next step. Then, and I don't know, have we been able to do any back end? Uh, yeah. Software yet? No, we have not begun anything yet. Just 
due to the board meeting, we didn't know which way it was going to go, how long it was going to take. So, so that's the other thing that we need. I to can do. kick that off and loop in some of the help desk guys to help me get all the software pushed out. How many workstations, Corey, do you think there are? There's, we estimate two per user. We said what, 20, 25 users? About 50. About 50. Okay. But we would need physical access into the water machines with the end user there, like we do with everybody else here in the county. Right. You'd need, yeah, you need like over their office. Really yeah. way into it. Yeah. If nothing else, right? Right. Is there a problem with that? I don't have a problem with that. I mean, if they want their email, they're going to have to call. Well, I mean, they, they would still have OWA access, if, if nothing else, so they would still be able to get email. Around 365, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's not on the machine, sorry, is it? OWA? Well, you just plug into the internet. Yeah, it's it's what is that 365? Uh, but I mean, we need to do this. We need to set up multi-factor authentication. With the, we need physical access with the users at their machines. So I don't know. That'd be something we'd probably start tomorrow morning, if possible, then, mm -hmm. Gary. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Would, would we have physical access to the end users at water with their machines tomorrow morning where we could walk through and do the installs and set up email and everything? I think that's feasible. Yeah. That works. Okay. So we might have, we might have a, one or two that are, not, that are on vacation, but other than that, well, everybody's yeah. so right. Anything else? Was that installing Gatekeeper for all of them as well? Too? Yeah, comes with Gatekeeper. We'll ripple. Okay. We might as well do everything when we're there. Do as much as we can when we're there. Yep. The main thing is to get them secure first. Get the map working. I don't know how much patience they'll have because they're going to take a while. Yeah. But we'll we'll do the best that we can. You had some some trouble spots there. Yeah. Do you have enough tokens? Yeah. Yeah. We all the tokens came in. They're mostly. Yeah. Any other questions? Is there a motion to adjourn? Somebody's making a motion to adjourn. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't take public comment. Jeez. Can we, uh, <laughs> make public comment after? Probably there. Sorry. Okay, there's a couple of questions. That looks like all the stuff from when we had uh, audio is, audio issue. Uh, going on. So I'm hoping the recording has all the audio. You're guessing you will. <laughs> Any questions from anybody? <laughs> My doctor said that's starting to go too. So okay. No questions from Amy. No questions from Shelly. Need Mike to repeat. That was when that sort of went down for two minutes. Got it. Okay, that's it. Thank you.